I'm really pushing it here, uh, really pushing the needle. Yesterday I did what's 90% of my one rep max, I did it for three sets of five. Uh, today I've walked in feeling sluggish, lethargic, you name it, all that, not feeling the greatest. And I did everything I could, I did, did everything I could to recover. You know, I ate plenty of food, slept like eight, nine hours, uh, plenty of hydration, all of that, and I still pulled up rather not ready for today's session in terms of giving my maximum. Um, you know, I did 200 kilos on the deadlift, I did 120 on the front squat and I failed the fourth set of bench press. I was doing 120. I got four reps on the fourth set. So overall, you can see across the board that I wasn't able to execute you know, any of my exercises today, any of the movements. It was just overall systemic fatigue and it's clear. Uh, you know, and I did, like I said, I did everything I could. Uh, so I'm kind of pushing the, the kind of needle here in terms of what my body is able to recover from uh, you know, at the best of times. So uh, you know, I gave my, my, my best and this is kind of what's happening. And so these type of, these, these types of kind of, uh, signals, symptoms that I see, I kind of incorporate that into my thinking, you know, you know, that's okay. One session is one session. If in two days time I have the same session and two days time I have the same session or tomorrow I come in, I feel sluggish again. That's all kind of data points that I need for future programming. Um, uh, maybe that, you know, three sets of five that's taking, you know, a lot out of me in the squat, maybe on today, today's session, I have to reduce the deadlift. I have to reduce the front squat and I, and I have to reduce the bench press just so I can do the primary stuff, which is every other day on the, on, on the back squat where I'm pushing the volume and the intensity. Uh, cause that's really kind of my primary day. That's where I really want to smash myself. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, uh, uh, cross that boundary of recovery. I really want to recover for tomorrow. So today I didn't push it. I didn't do anything spectacular. I just kind of took it on the chin and that was it. Uh, and, you know, I'm somebody that's not going out. Uh, you know, I've, I've got a stable family life, you know, as, as normal as you can be. I'm not going out getting smashed on drugs and alcohol. I'm not staying up until 5 a.m. You know, the only, the only time I do that, you know, until 7 a.m. in the morning, is when I have night duty. Uh, but I remember when I was 20 years old, man, oh my God. I think I've kind of mentioned what, what we used to do back in the day. So the moment I started going out, basically, was go out Thursday, go out Friday, go out Saturday, go out Sunday. We, each of those nights, we had a, a particular spot that we would go to. And, you know, rarely would I get home before three, four o'clock in the morning, man. Uh, it was like that. You know, the uni days were that, man. <laughs> like, I don't even know how I passed some of these subjects. And on top of that, I was still kind of weaning off of the basketball as well, like around the 18, 19, 20 years old. It was a busy, busy life. Um, but it just goes to show, man, if you really want to take this physical, you know, exercise, this, this sports, you know, world exercise, barbell training, if you want to take this seriously, man, I, you know, I, you can't be doing that, man. You cannot be doing that sort of stuff and expecting to be a top tier athlete. Uh, you know, I was thinking about LeBron, Jordan, Kareem, all these players, Messi, Ronaldo, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer. I was, I was talking to my mates last night about it and kind of equating all of these names. Um, and, you know, we brought up a thing called, you know, recency bias, recency or recency bias, uh, which is essentially people that grew up, say, in the 90s, say that LeBron is the greatest of all time. And people that have kind of my, my dad's age and watched Jordan uh, play, uh, you know, they say Michael Jordan and then dudes that are like 70, 80 years old and watched Kareem and watched Magic and watched, you know, all these other guys, Bill Russell, they'll say that those, some of those guys are, uh, you know, the best of all time. And so we're kind of talking about that and it just occurred to me that, uh, okay, so some of these guys are, you know, freaks of nature and some of these guys are, you know, born six foot nine with freakish ability and whatnot. I get that. Uh, but these guys, are, you know, to, to a certain extent, all of them had to, sacrifice there's just no doubt about that you can't be going out clubbing like a maniac every single night and then coming in and training like a maniac it's just impossible you know there's been a few people that i can think of right now dennis robin is one of them who did it um but he was already made he was a made athlete he was in the nba he could do whatever the hell he wanted in his early years in pistons uh detroit pistons he was a good boy you know and then he kind of derailed so i don't think any nba team would draft him if he was you know, they're taking pictures while in a wedding dress next to Madonna and all that. I don't think any, any team would be taking him then. Um, and I don't think he would become the athlete without sacrifice. So this thing that, that, that 
you know, I'm calling sacrifice. I'm, I'm basically saying that you're going to have to be lonely. You're going to have to be lonely, man. And when I say lonely, I'm talking about you're going to have to get up in the morning by yourself and train. You're going to have to, you know, not go out with your mates. You're going to have to maybe not spend so much time with your girlfriend. You're going to have to be putting in that, that, those, those hard, lonely hours in the gym, in the training, on the pitch, on the court, wherever you want to, whatever sport you're talking about. It's a lonely existence. And only once you've made it to professional, then it becomes crowded and you become, let's, let's say, opposite to lonely. Everyone wants a piece of you because you're Kobe Bryant, you're Michael Jordan, you're LeBron James. Everyone wants a piece of that superstardom, right? And some would argue that even that is a lonely existence because you don't really have any genuine interactions with anybody. People just want to be next to you uh, because you are that name. You have that superstardom, you have that cachet, that money, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's a really lonely existence to be the best. It's, it's, it really is because I can't see anybody going out Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and then, and then smashing the local league in basketball here in Adelaide, putting up 50 points and 20 assists or something like that. You know, I remember hearing stories about Joe Ingles and, you know, yes, I, I follow the Aussie boys quite closely. I know Giddy's killing it right now in the NBA, okay, see. Absolutely killing it. But Joe Ingles recently just had a nasty injury, probably end of season, I think it is. Uh, but, you know, he, he grew up here uh, playing basketball and he's from a, a, a club uh, here in Adelaide uh, called the Nalanga Tigers. Um, and, you know, the stories I, I used to hear about him, he used to put up like 40, 50, 60 points in this like first division, like in, in, in the local league. That is some extraordinary stuff. Like I used to hear these kind of numbers from like another player called Brad Newley and all these guys who have kind of made it into superstardom. And I'm sure Joe would have gone out and whatever. You know, he's also like 6'8", 6'9", all that stuff. You know what I mean? But to a certain degree, like there's, there's, there's levels to this, right? And, and, and the less you go out and more time you spend at your craft, the better you're going to be. It's simple as that. Uh, now that I think about it with everything that I have in my mind right now, thinking about it when I was 18, 19 years old, going out, you know, chasing tails, staying up late, you know, trying to fill up both of the lives, being the cool kid and also, you know, working my ass off. You can't do that, man. You cannot do that. You know, I just had, you know, really good sleep, heaps of food yesterday after the training session. I did all of that and I've come in, I feel sluggish. I could imagine if I went out and I got myself smashed, right? Absolutely fried my liver. Didn't get any sleep. Didn't get like quality food. And I've come in, I don't even know what this session would have been like. Uh, I, I don't think squat every day is possible if you're a party animal so it's, it's one of those things that it takes a certain maturity it takes a vision it takes a a clear understanding where your path in life is and i think a lot of us youngsters uh you know 16 17 18 years old we don't have that unless we have somebody like a rock near us that can kind of like ground us and tell us what's up um you know i went out i was basically like a normal kid uh i played division one basketball here wasn't the greatest obviously I didn't do anything with my basketball career, gave up at 20. Um, and I really wanted to play basketball, but now that I look back at it, I was just kidding myself, man. I, was, I wasn't working hard enough. I didn't have an example. I never knew that there was a guy in the world that could hit 93 freaking trays out of 100. That's Steph Curry. I mean, he was after my time and whatnot, but that's incredible stuff, man. Like, you know, if I knew that that, that was the norm, I would have just maybe had more hunger to train. So I had an example, I had somebody setting the pace. Um, I just wasn't aware of some of these things. I would watch the NBA players. I didn't really understand what the background process was. We didn't even have like NBA league pass in Australia here, man. Like we had maybe one game on ESPN a week and it was maybe a double header or something like that. But we didn't have any information. You know, you have to understand like the internet wasn't what it is today. Um, but if somebody said to me, man, you're gonna have to be a lonely, uh, teenager, you're going to have to work really hard. You're going to have to say no to going out. You're going to have to go, out, go, go to bed early and wake up uh, early and, and go for a run at the beach. You're going to have to do some of these things. Um, I didn't do that. And when I, think, when I think about retrospectively now, what, what work I did, I got exactly what I did. I got exactly what, what, how much work I put in. Um, you know, okay, I'm not six foot eight, six foot nine like Joe Ingalls. But, you know, okay, I'm six foot, six one. Okay, no worries. You can still make it. But be damned if somebody is going to be outrunning you or outfitted in you. If you are six feet tall and you are that, dis you know, have that disadvantage on the basketball court, you're going to have to max out the other bars. 
of attributes. You're going to have to be the fittest human being on, in that stadium. You're going to have to be the quickest. You're going to have to have the best handles. And you're going to have to have the best shot. All of these things can be trained. Okay, These are skill, skills. You can train to run. You can run all day. You can be Kipchoge if you wanted to freaking run marathons under two hours or whatever he does. You know, you, you can't grow. You can't do these other things. But skill, I feel, can be trained. Of course, none of us have the release of Steph Curry and the technique and whatever. I'm just saying at the local level, man. Like if you can't make it to a professional level basketball in Australia, just come on, man. Like you're supposed to be winning the MVP in Australia if just you can make a you know, seventh, eighth man in the NBA. You know what I mean? Um, that's how I think about it now, and, and you know, looking back at it now as a as a thirty three year old looking back at you know what I did, man, I got exactly what I deserved, man. Like I, there was just not enough work. I was going out, I was doing this and that, and I'm not blaming any of you guys, man. Like I'm saying it from a perspective of a married man with two kids. Like I don't need to go chase anything. Like I know life is more than just a freaking barbell. Um, it, it is really is. Like if I didn't go out do do all that stuff, I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have had these kids. You know what I mean? So everything is a as a reason, but this is where this is where some of these freaks that we talk about, and really are there are freaks because freaks are one in a billion, right? You know, and these guys will basically were like, no, I'm not gonna live the normal life. This is the thing, man. You cannot be living a normal life like 99% of the population and expect to be part of the one percenters. These one percenters are different human beings, man. They're not doing what 99% of the world is doing. They're not doing that. And now we have the information what people do. We, we know what Ronaldo does. You know, we have some information how hard he trained. We know what Djokovic does, his diet, his, his training, his flexibility, all that stuff. You know, back in the day, man, like Pete Sampras and all these guys, I doubt these dudes were yoga freaking maniacs. I doubt it, man. It was kind of like a gentleman's sport that would play and whatever. He wasn't that serious. Like, this is the thing, like, Physical prowess, training, sports science has evolved. We now know more. And so a guy like Djokovic comes onto the scene. And maybe like 20, 30 years time, somebody's going to have Djokovic's uh, flexibility and, you know, add another thing on top. I don't know what it is. Like muscle mass. God knows. I don't know. Um, it just keeps evolving. But these guys are different, man. They're different. You cannot be going out, going to bed at 4, 5 a.m. three times a night and expecting to be you know, a 20-year-old record breaker in whatever field you want to be in. If you do that and you're setting world records, then you are truly one in seven billion. Um, you know, I would, I would say that if you didn't go out and you really maxed out your potential, you could be even setting bigger records. Anyway, guys, I could go on for hours about this topic. Um, Lewis Adams, man, uh, thank you for jumping onto the Patreon list. Thank you for the support. I've had a whole bunch of chats with you over the, seems like over the years. Uh, on Instagram and on YouTube. I appreciate your support, man. I recognize the name the moment I saw it. Um, so I appreciate you guys, um, all of you guys, and, and tonight especially Lewis Adams. Uh, hopefully I'm saying Lewis Adams and maybe it's Louis Adams. I don't know if you're French. I don't think you're French. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.